Good morning, Edgewood Congregational Church, and welcome to Virtual Edgewood, a ministry of Edgewood Congregational Church in Cranston, Rhode Island. This is the second Sunday after Pentecost, June 14th, 2020. We are so glad that you are with us. Uh, just a couple quick announcements. We had a very successful uh, food drive uh, the first Wednesday, and we will do this again the first Wednesday of July. So look forward to some more notes about that. We are learning more and more about the pandemic and what we need to do both uh, in the short term and long term, and I know you'll be hearing more uh, from us soon about that. Please join me in prayer. Strangers visit Abraham and Sarah, and they welcome them with a feast. How wonderful. Strangers promise Sarah and Abraham a child in their own age. Too wonderful. Strangers leave Abraham and Sarah to wait and ponder. Is anything too wonderful for God? Let us worship our wonderful God. We call upon God to be with us wherever we are, in our homes, outside, anywhere where we take time to worship you. Holy One, who we so often don't recognize, come into our midst and make your presence known. Renew our strength, refresh our imaginations, retool our weary efforts to carry your peace into the world. Amaze us with your power to make all things new, and let us face your world with curiosity and hope. In the name of the one who leads us on the way, Jesus the Christ, amen. And uh, now that we are in ordinary time, or what we call Pentecost, uh, we have returned to doing the confession. So please respond with the bold letter, with the bold statements. Like Sarah and Abraham, we may be discouraged, tired of waiting for a future that seems impossible. Is anything too wonderful for God? Oh God, you call us to seek you in all times and places and work with courage to prepare the way for your kingdom. But our resolve too often fails and we give up too soon. Holy One, have mercy. Oh God, you call us to offer peace to friends and strangers, to prepare the way of your kingdom, but we fail to cultivate the spirit of peace in our own lives. Christ, have mercy. Oh God, you call us to be full of joyful confidence to prepare the way for your kingdom, but anxious doubt often burdens us and blocks our witness to your good news. Holy One, have mercy. My friends, Sarah laughed at first, doubting God's promise. She, Sarah laughed at last, delighted at God's promise fulfilled. May we laugh and hope and delight in pondering. How wonderful. In Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our two readings for today uh, come from the book of Psalms and from Genesis. Psalm 116. I love God because God has heard my voice and my supplications, because God inclined an ear to me. Therefore, I will call on God as long as I live. What shall I return to God for all God's bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of God. I will pay my vows to God in the presence of all God's people. Precious in the sight of God is the death of God's faithful ones. O oh God, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of God. I will pay my vows to God in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the house of God, in your midst. O oh Jerusalem, praise be to God. And the second reading comes from uh, Genesis uh, uh, chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of memory. As he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said, 
And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them until the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I do not, I do not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore, a, bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Anyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham and Sarah that, that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Sarah laughed to herself. I adore this reading from Genesis. It embraces the most essential characteristics of our ancestors' faith, a radical hospitality to all, a reverence for those we welcome into our homes, an, an assumption that who we receive come to, into our homes and that they are good, and a willingness for us to receive the word, word even from new voices. Remember what Hebrews 13 verse 2 says so wisely, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing, by, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. I can see Abraham practicing his hospitality as he becomes aware of the presence of the three men, welcoming them into his home to eat and to rest. Like many husbands of his time, he orders Sarah to make three portions of bread, and he goes and finds a calf for food, telling his servants to prepare it for the meal. As it is served to the guest, he stands by them under a tree as they eat. Now, di now, did you notice who wasn't by them as they ate? Sarah and the servants. Astutely, one visitor, and we presume this to be God, asks Abraham, where is his wife? And he responds with, in the tent. Remarkably, the guest proclaims that in due season, Sarah will bear a child. Sarah at the entrance of the tent last because she and Abraham are very old and beyond the age to have children. It was one of those bittersweet laughs, practically cynical. It is almost like, huh, men, with what foolishness they talk when full of food and wine. Underneath that laugh is the pain of not having had children and knowing full well it was too late for them. Then Sarah's laugh is met with an encounter by God. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you, he says, in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah, of course, denies that she laughs because it would have been rude for her to be ungenerous or to insult a guest. But mark God's word because in due season Sarah bore a son, Isaac, for she and Abraham. Now her laughter turns to joy as she remarks, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. 
This lovely story speaks to us today in so many ways of hospitality and of hope. Things dreamt about but not realized until a stranger comes to Abraham and Sarah's home. Their generosity is met with fulfillment. Hearts nearly closed to all possibilities are once again opened in due time. Such an extraordinary example of how to remain open even when all seems lost. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, as Hebrew says, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. We are living in days of tremendous expectancy, edging between hope and hopelessness for our old, tired world. We long for how it was before a mysterious illness swept across us much like locusts of the ancient world. We live in expectancy for a vaccine promised to us, and yet many still become ill and others die, while others neglect courtesies of protection. This is not radical hospitality. It is not radical hospitality to not wear face masks. Let me just say that. It is selfishness. And in our frustration about natural disease, another type of disease rises. It explodes across our nation, and that disease is racism. Black men and women die because of profiling and presumption that is genetic in our nation's mindset. It is as if white authority cannot help itself. No matter how much we identify the problem and we say, we as white people care, racism continues to ooze out of our character. Yes, this is why combating racism every day matters because we cannot take a, take a 401 year old practice and just turn it off. It requires a radical hospitality to open hearts and hear about the experiences of people of color, to educate ourselves, and to reject the amnesia about this history of racism. You know, I can almost hear Sarah laughing under his breath, under her breath, just as she did while those strangers dined. Yet nothing is impossible through and with God, and we can be proved wrong even when we think we know all certainties. Look, Sarah was wrong. And she did bear a child who became our spiritual ancestor. What can radical hospitality accomplish today? Well, despite a pandemic, thousands of people have taken to the streets to say no more. Yes, they are risking help. And they do not stop marching. What is most remarkable is the open hearts of young people, of all races, organizing to stop racism. This is the inheritance for which we have so long waited. They are leading the rest of us. And then there are moments of uncommon courage exhibited during these marches. People helping people move forward. One story that emerged from that afternoon when peaceful protesters were gassed and fired upon at Lafayette Square in Washington, D.C. As the protesters were scattered to the winds with tear gas, and just as the curfew was about to begin, it became quite frantic there. As one protester reported to CNN, I guess someone gave an order and they just started pushing us, spraying maize, trampling people. And then that's when everybody st started panicking. The 22-year-old college senior said, he looked around and saw his friend running up the steps into a nearby home and a man waving for protesters to come in. I just ran towards the step, ran up the steps, and just started to get inside as quick as possible, Mika said. In the moment, I didn't know if it was the right decision, but I guess it was. He said he looked out of the window and saw more police officers than he could count, and that many people were arrested outside. The home was that of Rahul Duby. During that evening, he offered respite for 70, some 70 protesters who were spared arrest. He made them comfortable and relieved them of the ill effects of pepper spray and mace. And apparently he continued to negotiate with the police outside concerning what he was doing and, and how he was caring for the people inside. And later CNN reported that he helped people get rides home. Those 70 protesters did not ra know Raul Duby, and he did not know them until about 7 p.m. that evening. Yet radical hospitality offered to all of us an example of radical hope and kindness. You know, nine months after those three strangers arrived at Abraham's encampment, Sarah gave birth to a son, Isaac. 
and her laughter turned from bittersweet to full-out joy. And while we live in a time in which there is little laughter, rather much pain from loss and fear, we also live in a time of hospitality and hope because God has promised this type of goodness in our lives will remain and be present to us if we just stay open. Let us laugh out loud, out, excuse me, let us all laugh out loud just as Sarah did in belief and praise. Today we come to the time we so adore in our church service next to giving the peace and that is prayers of the people. And uh, I'm sharing with you a prayer uh, that was written by Bishop Ken Untener of Saginaw, and it is dedicated to martyred Bishop, Archbishop Oscar Romero. After the prayer and before the Lord's Prayer, I will leave some time for you to lift up in your hearts people that you know are in need of our, our thoughts and our care. It helps now and then to step back and take a long view. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings wholeness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. That is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between master builder and the worker. We are the workers, not the master builders. Ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Amen. As you lift up your prayers today, I remember Abraham and Sarah and the three who arrived at Abraham's tent and give thanks because when Isaac was born, Abraham and Sarah had no sense of what lay ahead of them, that they would be the ancestors of our faith. I lift up prayers for those who have lost their lives to COVID-19 and those who are ill in hospital and respirators. I pray that we may have a sense of hospitality that will help us to care about ourselves and each other enough, the second commandment, that we will wear face masks and do social distancing because we want wellness for ourselves and for those we love. I pray for all those who march, who marched so bravely this week. I pray for their safety and from them a new spirit of hospitality, a new sense of promise for the American promise for all Americans. I pray today for all those who have died from racism. I pray for George Lloyd and his family. And I pray for all others who are ill and in need of healing, all those who have died. And I today take hope in God's promise of fulfillment as we now know through Sarah. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the closing prayer. Holy One, accept these gifts of prayer and multiply them so that the wonder of your love and justice and peace may be known throughout the world. My friends, go forth from this time together with hearts open to the surprising, inexhaustible love of God. Greet friends and strangers with the gift of Christ, mercy and justice and joy. Expect the Spirit to meet us wherever we are, in struggle, in grief, and in peace. Ponder, is anything too wonderful for God? And as we always say to each other, God be with you, God be with you, God be with you until we meet again. Amen. I always give thanks for the sources out there that help me put together these services, and that includes the Worship Ways in the UCC Church for June 14th, and also for a source I just found from the socialjusticeresourcecenter.org, and that is the prayer from which I got today's prayers of the people. Thank you all. You heard not only my voice, but the voice of my puppy, Nellie Gilles, who was uh, telling people not to walk in front of our house. And uh, I love it. I love, uh, sometimes it's great to do uh, worship this way. Uh, it's not perfect, but it is God's. Be well, remain safe. Much love to you all. Amen.